The Chanel Trendy or the Classic Flap? What, what, what one do you think it will be? And really, really go from being intimidated to I don't want to go in there to sitting on the sofa and enjoying a glass of champagne or a Diet Coke or an espresso. Vintage Chanel or Classic Chanel? Birkin or Kelly? And I'm not going to give you five minute answers. These are going to be quick fired answers. I always get asked, what is your favourite brand for entry luxury? Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Um, bit of beauty today, bit of handbags, some luxury shopping tips, maybe for some high street. Let's touch on some high street tips as well. Um, it's the weekend. I seem to film all my videos on the weekend lately. This is the reveal of the extension, the, the colour. If you would like to know more in depth what colour it is, see a bit more of the extension, I will link that video below. Maybe you've already seen it. And the whole reveal of the kitchen in this room will be revealed in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you're subscribed. We've finally got it fixed. Just need to put some lights, fixtures back up. Um, now today, to start off the video, I want to talk to you about a beauty product. And I don't talk about beauty products unless it's something that I truly love, would buy, and it's suitable for a super sensitive skin like mine. And I also, as many of you know, I have a two week rule whenever it comes to sharing anything beauty with you. I feel like you need two weeks when it comes to beauty. So many times I've had something and I can see an instant glow, reducing of redness, that's happened to me a lot, but I feel like two weeks is the magic number to see any bad side effects or long-term positive effects so that's what I've done with this um, my outfit will be linked below so I know how many of you ask about the outfit went for some plaits I think I'm still in holiday mode uh, and straight hair I haven't had straight hair for so long this shirt I bought I thought I bought it in an extra large I'm such a lazy chaotic shopper I'm literally in and out I've got home but it's an extra small but it's not so bad but I love orange with denim. I'm still in love with orange ever since I got this House Orange Kelly. And following on from the orange trend, even though this serum has been three years in the making, this is the Youth Bomb 360 Facelift Serum Concentrate by Beauty Pie. I've spoken to you about Beauty Pie before. Um, it's the science to the glow. They have collaborated with a renowned dermatologist, so I was very excited about this, and I was because I love serums. If it's my, if I could have one beauty product, serum, moisturizer, eye cream, you know, anything, it would be serum. I find that serum is like really penetrates the skin and is really concentrated, and I feel like I get the best glow with the serum. So serums are my thing, and I've never had a serum that is this large in a bottle is very generous and beauty pie if you don't know about beauty pie already it's a let me just give you a quick background i know i've spoken about them before but they're a membership website that you don't have to be a member to shop online it's just that when you're a member you get better prices if i do have any discounts i'll even put it on the screen or the description box um and all the information will mainly be in the description box below but the prices are around 75% off. It's crazy. I shop there myself and I don't get a discount and I shop there all the time. It was my first Holy Grail product that I've ever said this is a Holy Grail. I'm actually wearing it today. It's their um, like gel eyebrow. Phenomenal. I'll link it below for those who missed last time. That cost me... The retail was like... Normally I'm used to paying like 22 28 I think there it was... They, they said it should be about 17 even then they, they say lower than what it normally is, than what I normally pay. Um, and then it was £8, and then I used a discount code that was on the website anyway, like for everyone. And it cost me £3. £3 for the best I... Anyway, I'm going off piece now, but the prices are amazing. So check it out. The, the membership is very, very reasonably priced. So don't be scared by the membership. You don't have to be a member to shop. Um, so this is basically, and I am going to read off some facts for you because I want to make sure, you know, it's a, something that goes on your skin, goes on your face, people have allergies, I want to get it correct and there's a lot of information. It has about 15 ingredients, but the overall results from this youth bomb is that it helps to firm, lift, tighten, visibly soften lines, 
and wrinkles, boost radiance and enhance lum luminosity. That's all I want from my beauty products. That is what I'm looking for when it comes to my skincare and it's all in one in a huge bottle. And for those of you that are obsessed with skincare and or you need it because you're at that age or you're gonna be cleverer than me and start preventing early, something that's actually been built by science, been built by a dermatologist, that's taken three years to make, that's when it gets really exciting. Now I've used this for two weeks and I was thinking please let this be, please let this um, be compatible with my skin because I, in the last six months, every time I put like a lot of beauty products on my skin, it stings, it's getting more and more sensitive and I think it has something to do with the with the medical cream I'm using, was using for my eczema. I think it's really thin to my skin, so it's ultra sensitive. This does feel really, really soothing. And I don't like it when I put something on and you can smell the perfume and they concentrate more on the, the color and the smell as opposed to what's in there. So it feels, it smells like it's full of goodness, if that makes sense. So I had a feeling it was gonna work really well. So this for me has done exactly what it says. And there's some statistics here that I have. 91% reported their skin feeling smoother, 86 reported their skin looking brighter, 84% reported healthy glow, 76 reported that their skin looked younger. And this was a trial feature with 56 women over four weeks. So they didn't even do the two weeks that I do, they do four weeks. And I think the best thing for me to tell you now is I'm going to just put up a few of the ingredients on the screen and then I think it's best for you to check out the website, check out the membership, check out exactly um, like all the, de the details and information on the website. That's probably going to be best, but for me that's used it for two weeks, if you're into serums or you've not got a serum that you love, this has everything all in one and it's really got the science behind it and when I'm even saying these words, this is what you would expect to pay you know, I mean, I've paid, I've got serums that are like 500 pounds because if it's got all the, you know, it's been collaboration, been in collaboration with someone super famous or, you know, celebrity, if you're paying for all of this and the ingredients, the time it takes to make, it blows my mind that Beauty Pie keep the prices so low and it's because there's no middleman. Um, the packaging's quite basic, but I actually really like that because it's really minimal, looks really nice in my bathroom. I actually like minimal like this. Um, and they cut out the middleman, so it's lab to consumer, and you know, this bit in the middle normally does make the price 50% more. So it's the first of their kind. I love their products, and I know you're going to love it too. And I said in my last video, I actually discovered Beauty Pie mainly through a friend. Um, I'd heard bits and bobs before, but I took the plunge buying something through a friend. So it's the best recommendation, really like that. So I'll leave you with a little reel um, of me applying this, just if you want some tips to apply it. With most beauty products, put it on your hand, the warmth from your, from your body, especially if it's a moisturiser, it just helps it go on a bit longer up with the neck, like pat around the eyes, always use these fingers here for around your eyes, um, and then don't put the pipette on your skin. A lot of the time I do put it on the back of my hand. If I've got dry hands here, I feel like I get a lot more use out of the product when it's at the back of my hand, so I recommend that you put it at the back of your hand, in between your fingers, and then just lightly massage it in, and I personally have been using this every morning and every night for two weeks, so it's something that you can use every day. So I'll link that below. Prices will blow your mind, made in Switzerland, very fancy. And like I say, it's the biggest bottle of face serum I've ever seen. So that's the serum. Next week, we have the painter coming back to get the quote for the room, and I had a fireplace made that has taken a year to make, and apparently it's in like the docking and I think it's gonna be another two weeks until it gets there, but we're so close to like revealing the whole downstairs. So let's go upstairs, and we're gonna talk handbags, luxury shopping advice, bit of high street shopping advice. Um, probably have, I need to do a bit of tidy up my wardrobe as well. So let's pop upstairs. <laughs> Bye, 
guys, welcome back to the second part of this video. Um, I ended up having to get changed because I was feeding Honoré and then I tidied my whole room. So it's actually the end of the day now, but here I am. Um, changed my outfit. Um, also put in my new earrings because I think we're going to go out for dinner now. So I wanted to make a bit more of an effort. So that's why I'm changed. I'll link everything below as always. Um, so I had a thought about the second part of this video and I, I've actually decided to um, answer some quick round questions that I get asked all the time on DM. And also, I'm not wearing any foundation. I'm trying to make the most of like, get my skin super healthy and I don't want to cake it with makeup. So I've just got a bit of CC cream, the serum of course, and um, some bronzer. So, let's get started with the questions. I haven't even planned this. It's literally just the questions that I get asked day after day after day. So. Birkin or Kelly, and I'm not going to give you five minute answers, these are going to be quick fired answers. Birkin or Kelly, Kelly. I love the Birkin, I wouldn't turn one down again buy in, but Kelly, ultimately the Kelly. That is just because it's more practical. Even before being a mum, I prefer a um, long handle and a top handle. I love having both those options. I love wearing oversized blazers and using um, the strap, so I just find it more practical. Uh, it's like, it closes easier. I prefer the look of it. So, Kelly. What is your favorite, I always get asked, what is your favorite brand for entry luxury? So, if you look at my whole handbag collection, which is still rather large, but I have condensed it over the last couple of years for my love for Hermes, and also my love for vintage Chanel. Like, I started off loving vintage Chanel. Really, you know, I started, earning more money and thinking, oh yes, I can finally buy a new Chanel, but I've reverted back to vintage Chanel. I prefer, okay, now I've answered another question, vintage Chanel or new Chanel, uh, but I honestly prefer vintage Chanel. I get so, nothing excites me more than a 90s blazer or a 90s bag or, you know, my, my bag that I want at the moment, I want another vintage classic flap over a new bag. I barely even look at the new bag. So vintage Chanel, new Chanel, vintage Chanel. Um, entry price point bags, if you have a look at my collection, there's it's, it's Chanel and Hermes, a bit of Dior, but that's not entry price point, it's cheaper than Chanel, but it's not entry price point, Saint Laurent or Gucci. So my first thought was Saint Laurent, and I do absolutely love Saint Laurent, this is one of my most used bags, I love this bag, it is a bit logo mania, but it's very practical, like I use it every day, being a mum, like traveling I use this a lot and it looks pristine and brand new so that's what I want for my bags but weirdly Gucci Gucci is one of my favorite I can't believe I'm saying that because I never really oh I've got one Louis Vuitton I always get asked about Louis Vuitton I've got one Louis Vuitton and I do like Louis Vuitton um I'm skipping this is one I should have organized um yeah Gucci and I first fell in love with the Gucci when I got my baby bag um I love that baby bag I'm surprised I don't see more mums with it I just love that old vintage monogram well it's not vintage but it looks kind of vintage it's wipeable it's shoved under the buggy for two years but it looks like brand new it's very practical inside very light i wouldn't even get a new one if i have another baby i would just keep that one and i would keep it forever and ever and i'd pass it down to some one of my friends or sister or something i absolutely love it and it met and then i wanted to get this bag and i wear it together um so yeah gucci is my favorite entry point bag that brings me on to what is your most used bag. It is literally this one. It's undone all the time. I literally used this this morning to go and get a coffee. I love this bag and I've said it so many times. I just love everything about it. I love the trunk style. It goes with absolutely everything that I put on. It, it's, it fits so much. I can fit wipes, baby bottle, my large wallet, um, my vlogging camera, big sunglasses case, and then some. Like a makeup bag, it's the most practical bag that I have. It's the most inexpensive bag that I have. It goes with everything that I have, that I literally own, because it's just one of those bags that goes with everything in every style, and I can't praise it enough. Like this, this I do look after my bags, but you know, I'll be in the park of Honoré, and I'll be bending down, and it will go on the floor, I'll shove it over the pram. You know, I want to still enjoy them. I didn't buy it to, you know, protect it like a museum piece. It looks like it's brand new. If I sold this, I would say pristine condition. Adjustable strap, I love it. So 
There was only one place that sold this and I'll see if they're still in stock, but it's my most worn bag. And I've got like the mini suitcase, the, the like vacation holder, I love it. Um, what was the other question that I was going to? Do you like Louis Vuitton? So yes, I do like Louis Vuitton. Um, when I was really young, I liked Louis Vuitton. I think there's a lot of affordable bags. Um, but then I think, I don't know, I just went straight to Chanel really. I saved and saved for my first Chanel bag and kind of missed the Louis Vuitton stage. But for no other reason than I just couldn't afford everything and I was very set on Chanel. I most love Louis Vuitton for their trunks and all their toiletry, all their toiletry bags and toiletry bags. I just think they're really practical, like that coated canvas is really practical and durable. I think they look really beautiful when you're travelling in the hotel or in your own um, bathroom. And I think that's what I want to start doing because... I, tr I really do travel so much, in particular living in more than one home. It's not practical. I did actually go and buy all my products for here and then all my products in the other homes. But it doesn't, it's not really good because I once had a Le Mer, like a really expensive serum, that I put it somewhere where the sun was, I hadn't been there for so long, it went off and I never want to make that mistake again. So my new plan, and I'm sure so many of you do this, is I want to have like a couple of Louis Vuitton toiletry bags that are really nicely displayed in my bathroom that I can simply just take because I'm really lacking that. So, they're my quick fire questions that I get asked all the time. Now I want to talk to you about some luxury shopping tips and then we'll go on to high street tips. So, I have spoken about this before and I've spoken about this years ago when I used to work at Harrods. For those of you that don't know me, um, I was a fashion specialist at Harrods for five years. A fashion specialist was uh, kind of off the personal shopping team but we would walk around the whole store. We'd be trained on like to find people that were going to spend a lot of money in the store. It sounds a bit weird saying that out loud, but that is what we did. Uh, how to sell to different cultures. Loved working at Harrods, got so much training from there. Uh, so much life experience. What was I saying? That happened to me ever since I became a mum. I think it's exhaustion when it's just like hay bale moment when things just fly out. That's it, it's come back to me. Um, so when I used to work at Harrods, I used to, and I actually used to be the one shopping on the other side. I feel like I can give you the best advice because I used to be on the other side and I've shopped in luxury since I worked at Harrods and um, I was in very early 20s, I was fresh out of uni, like I hadn't even graduated when I got my job so I literally went from uni to there and then shopped pretty much every day when I worked there and still shop there now. So the main advice I want to give you, give you sorry, is the, the people that work at luxury department stores, luxury brands, I think people forget they're just normal people like you and I and they can be intimidating and sometimes they are because they're under a lot of pressure, I know I was under a lot of pressure to sell and there'll be incentives to you know for them to sell and sometimes they can get a bit um, tr one track minded that they need to sell and they go into it and they forget that you're just a normal person as well so it works both ways but when you ultimately just talk to them like you would a, n a normal person take advantage of it like when I go to high street stores not all but um, like one high street store in particular actually quite a lot of them you ask them for something and they're like yeah it's over there and because I do shop a lot of luxury and this is why I love shopping online so much when I do shop luxury, it remind the shop high street. It reminds me of how how amazing it is to shop luxury. Once you get over that hurdle of that, it's quite intimidating. They they are so attentive. They are knowledgeable. They just make use of it and get over that that hurdle. So top tip is is they're just normal people and just don't don't be nervous because they'll pick up on that. That brings me to at the end of the day, they do have targets to reach. So if you're two people standing there and they can pick up with their experience who's going to buy something and who isn't, they're going to pick the person that looks like they shop a lot and they're going to buy something. So how you come out of that is don't kind of be standing there that you're so intimidated and you don't want to leave. Enjoy it, it's shopping. Shopping's meant to be enjoyable. So have a look around. If you do something wrong, like you're stepping in a part that you're not meant to, it doesn't matter. They'll just say you can't go there. You say, oh, sorry about that, and you move on. You know, just things like that. Um, then I'm going to tell you some things what to say and questions to ask but just remember you're there to enjoy being shopping and if you feel nervous you're going to look nervous and that's going to tell the the sales assistant that you don't really shop here a lot so my advice to you is that you ask 
these two questions. In a luxury sh uh, shopping environment, you can get champagne, Diet Coke, water, whatever it is you like. If you're a little bit hungry, you can even ask for some food. Um, you know, in Chanel they give out minstrels, they'll always have a little something. In Cartier they'll have their Cartier champagne, they'll have little nibbles. Ask, they will give it to you. They're happy to give it to you, it's part of their job. You don't have to buy something in order to get that. So you go in, and sometimes I have no intention of buying anything, but I want to shop, and instead of leaving, so I want to go somewhere and get a drink because I'm thirsty, or I need a bit of a coffee, you can have an espresso. I will say to them, can I have a drink please? If I want a Diet Coke over a water, I will, I will go and ask for that Diet Coke. And I will sit there and I will have a bowl of minstrels before I start my shopping. Don't take advantage you know, they'll remember you if you're just going in for that, like, to be smart about it, but, you know, you are you are about to spend some a lot of money, they are making a lot of money from you, so enjoy the service, ask for your minstrels and Chanel, ask for your Diet Coke and Dior, and really, really go from being intimidated to I don't want to go in there, to sitting on the sofa and enjoying a glass of champagne or a Diet Coke or an espresso. It will also show the sales assistant, uh, she, she knows how it works in here, she's obviously shocked, because when you're about to buy a handbag for £8,000 because the prices have gone so extortionate. When you have spent that about amount of money and they're going to wrap it all beautifully, beautiful for you, they'll say to you, take a seat, would you like a drink? Always say yes. Like You're going to sit there waiting 10 minutes for your bag to be wrapped. Enjoy the moment and get the money's worth of your £8,000 on that bag. So, and if you are just looking, enjoy your drink. They don't care if you have a Diet Coke. They're making lots of money. So that's my top tip. My other top tip is don't walk in there all shy and reserved. And this reminds me of when I first shared this tip. It was about the Chanel espadrilles. Who remembers them? The Chanel espadrilles were the time when Instagram blew up. I don't even know the date. It must have been around 2015. 2014 maybe, maybe even 2013, when Instagram really blew up and then you started getting the resellers on Instagram. And it was actually why I come around, uh, come away. I used to have an Instagram account called Chelsea Styling. It's private, I've lost the password, but I have a big announcement that I'm reopening Chelsea Styling Instagram. Um, so go and follow me on there. I have no idea what the pictures are like. They were from when Instagram first started and I was working at Harrods, like literally fresh Instagram. I was one of the first concierges literally on Instagram. So it's gonna be very funny and I had around 4,000 followers and it's been on private for about five years because I was just like a clients only. Um, and we did very well at Chelsea Styling, but I'm going to reopen it and it's gonna be like a handbag inspo, a little few other bits. So go follow, follow along, tag, hashtag Chelsea Styling and if you want to be regrammed, maybe you don't want to be on there yet, but give it me six months and it'll be great. Um, so what was the last thing I was going to tell you, the last top tip? Um, the resellers of the espadules. Yeah, it just reminded me of my days back at Chelsea Styling. I shared this back in the Chanel espadule days. Now you have it of anything, the pearl hair clip, the heart bag. If you go in there and say, oh, do you have any heart bags? Uh, do you have any of the Chanel trainers? Do you have any of the, the Chanel logo sandals? They don't ask this question. Go straight in there and say, can you show me the sizes that you have in the Chanel logo sandals? I'll show you which ones. We can also share this video with Nguyen and one of my latest purchases. So these at the moment are one of the hottest Chanel things to get hold of. They're not for everyone, I love them. It's gonna bring me on to my last tip of this video. So go in there, whatever it may be, it might be that the Chanel Trendy has flown out in a rainbow colour. You go in there, can you show me what sizes you have of the Chanel Trendy in the rainbow? See the difference in the way you're positioning the question. It's like, you know they're there, you know they've got a couple in the back. It completely changes, they'll, they'll listen, they'll be like, ah, oh, how does she know we've got some in the back? Well they know because they're experienced shoppers. So I. It wouldn't be a trick that I would ask that, it's just my experience of shopping in Chanel. I know that they will have a couple there. And you know, once you build up your relationship, and luxury shopping is all about relationships, um, and I've had some terrible, terrible, terrible luxury fashion um, experiences, like so bad. And I even stopped shopping at certain brands for a couple of years because it just it just ruins it. Don't you like you're spending money? We get that everyone has targets, but be a nice person, and it, you're not the most important thing in the world. I'm not talking about the sales associates. I'm talking about even higher up. It's like you're over yourself. 
So um, I have a lovely, lovely Chanel associates at the moment and I think it's just because I got so over it that if I met someone nice then great. So just have a little chat with them, always go back to the same person. If you're going to buy an Hermes bag or a Chanel bag, go back to the same place, always, always go back to the same place. In particular the super brands, Dior, Chanel, even like Bauman. They're not going to give you, for all we know, Bauman could be the biggest brand next month. You know how Bottega come out of nowhere, Selena's come back. Build up your sales associate relationship so that when bags, um, products do blow up or brands do blow up, they'll remember their nice relationships and they'll save you the bags or, the, or whatever the product is. I've actually had someone wear a Bauman jacket like a £7,000 pastel Bauman jacket. I had to sell it because it was like a 36 and too small for me. And I loved this jacket. It was so far out of my reach. I was working at Harrods. And it went in the sale. Then it got lost for a year. And then it went back in the sale for like £600. And she saved it for me. And when, she, when I came in, she said, I've saved it for you because I knew you liked it. That's the beauty and the result, like the fruition of having a good relationship. So yeah, not only go back to the same place, the same store, go back to your same sales associate. And if you really want something and that sales associate isn't in and you need to buy it, make a point of saying my relationship and SA is with this person. It will go a long, long way. Um, last tip, I'm gonna tell you one more last tip and I hope that this has been helpful. If you have any other tips that you would love to share with everybody else, please, please leave below. Now, this is a tip that I'm gonna regret sharing, but you know, I should stop shopping a lot anyway. I had a lot of people say to me, how did I get my heart bag? How did I get these? Um, even influencers were like, oh, you're so lucky you got one. And I hate it when people say, you are so lucky. Lucky is when you have a child because that's something that you're blessed with from, you know, out of this world and you can't control it. That's lucky and that you've been blessed. Getting a pair of shoes, it's or getting a promotion, it's not luck. Maybe right place in the right time, a bit of it, but when these were on the wrong runway, I put my name down before the runway had even finished. I took a screenshot of the runway and I sent it to my essay. I did that with the heart bag, I put two colours aside, I wanted the black and white. Uh, turned out I was only allowed one in the end, which was fine, saved me spending more money. I put my name down for these. And then you get put on a list and then the list becomes so big they stop the list. So don't be disheartened, like I even know uh, one influencer and one friend that didn't put their name down for these or the heart bag and they ended up getting both, they ended up getting two heart bags. So it does happen, they trickle things back in. So they did that with the CC jumper, the pearl hairband, uh, which actually puts me off because they, you're, it's meant to be exclusive, but then the next season everybody has it and then it doesn't become exclusive, but you know, it's no big deal. It just makes me hold off a bit, spending as much money on something exclusive when it's not. So um, yeah, if you what, watch the runways, get an essay. If you don't have an essay, just go in and say, I've seen this on the runway, I would love to put my name down. And that, they'll already take you seriously because you've done the strategy and the process of exactly how it's meant to be. They'll, be, they'll know you're serious, you're waiting ahead, because everyone works a season ahead. They're already looking at the buy for the season that's on the catwalk, so then you're more in line with, with what they're doing and they'll take you more seriously. So, you know, it's shopping, enjoy shopping. They're just humans <laughs> like the rest of us, um, but you do need to do a few strategies, like watch the runway, make your order, you don't have to pay for it, make your order from there, Always shop in the same store, always shop with the same person, show a bit of confidence, like asking for a drink or some minstrels or whatever it is, espresso, and yeah, just enjoy it. It's shopping, isn't it? And my last message that I always like to share is don't live beyond your means, don't shop on a credit card unless you're doing it sensibly to build up your credit, but it's something that I always like to, to share. So um, I think before we go, let's, finish this with my most warm bag and my least warm bag. So as you know, Gucci is one of my most warm bags. No, let's change that. If I had to only keep one of these bags, which one would it be? So I'm gonna put up a picture of my handbags. You've all got place your bets now of what you think I would get, which one I would keep. I know exactly what which one it would be and you might be shocked. I think you're going to say this one. 
which I do love, 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 love. But this is actually a very cool tone and really, really cool tone bands like this are actually quite difficult to wear. They don't go with everything, like they don't, it's quite hard to style. I was about to say, not for me, um, but that would have come across really awful. But even for me, sometimes I have to think about it more than what I normally do. So as much as I love this bag and I do wear it in the winter, it wouldn't be the only one that I would keep. I then think you're going to say the Gold Kelly or the Etope Kelly, but it's this. It's my 28 Kelly. And I think I would keep it in the 28 as well. I do love the 25, that's another question I get asked. So this one question that I can't tell you, which is my favourite. I'd be happy with only 25s or only 28s, so I can take that or leave it. But yes, that would be my number one bag, my Kelly 28. If I had to get rid of one bag, this might not be very fair because it's not really in the same level. Probably this one because it's my least reach bag. You probably don't even know I have any Louis Vuitton. But I don't know why because I actually love this bag. This is the Bichette Matisse. I bought this in Paris. It's actually an amazing bag and I never want to sell it because I know there'll be a time when I wear it all the time. It's got the top handle, the zip at the back. It's a coated canvas. I love it. I really, really love this bag. I love it in the monogram as well. Um, and I think it would be a really great bag for my mum. But it's just my, my bag that I reach for the least. Um, oh, another question that I get asked all the time. The Chanel Trendy or the Classic Flap? What, what, what one do you think it will be? So always I said Chanel Trendy. This was my first Chanel Trendy. I think it was in 2015. I can't remember. They recently bought this beige back. It's like I got a mauve undertone. This was a seasonal bag. And it was love at first sight for me, and it was when Chanel started to get a bit expensive. Their seasonal bags were never this expensive. This was the start of it. Then they did a cheap, like more reasonable season, a more reasonable season again. Then the prices went up again. They didn't do this bag for a couple of years. Then it came back for a seasonal bag, which they often do. And then about two, three years ago, it became a classic. I basically went off this bag when it became a classic. I don't know why. I, I just did. I, I don't reach for it so much, even though I think it's such a beautiful bag. Whenever I see anyone wearing this, I think it looks really beautiful and I love it. Again, it's got everything I love, cross handle, the, um, the top handle at the back. Like It's really practical, it fits everything I need. I really, really do love it, but I do prefer the classic. You can never beat the originals. The 2.5 reissue is the original, but if I could only have these trendy or the classic, I would go with the classic. I get asked that all the time, but I'm still not ready to sell them. I still do like them. Too much to sell. Um, let's do one more question. Vintage Chanel or classic Chanel? It's very difficult, you know. Out of the two, I reach for the classic Chanel. I don't, uh, the, the, the vintage Chanel, sorry. I don't know why I do that. I think I prefer the lambskin. And I definitely prefer the 24 karat gold. Like this one is really, really tarnished. So I think that, the, oh I know the quality is better with this one and that might be why I always reach for it. I just think it's nicer. I just think the lambskin is nicer. When I bought this, it was back in the day when caviar was cheaper than lambskin and that was the reason why I bought it. I was scared that the lambskin was going to be too, too um, fragile, but it's not. So. That's another question I get asked, lambskin or caviar? They're both great, I have both of them. I would buy caviar again, I would buy lambskin again. Um, but I do prefer lambskin, like this is a lambskin. I just, I just prefer it. And it's more durable than you think. And if it gets a little scratch, you can buff it out. I don't mind the scratches. So I do like both, but I, I don't know, I, I'm really partial to the vintage. And being realistic, the last classic flat bag I bought was this. No, I'm confirming it's vintage because I bought this and when I got to the till it was a thousand pound more than I thought and I already thought that it was like 595 which is extortionate. It's like you can get a Kelly for that. And then I think it was actually 695 and I, I nearly walked away but because it was yellow, I just thought this is going to be my last one and that's it and it was. It probably is going to be my last one so I can confirm it's vintage because I think they're too overpriced and I have glue seeping out of my white jumbo. I'm just being honest with you, and I do get really sick of how they get tarnished, but 
I do look and I'm really grateful for my SA because I can just text her like if you ever get like a colour that I really love can you please let me know so I'm really appreciative of that and every now and again I will but I'm actually more inclined to buy the ready to wear I prefer the ready to wear classic over the trendy and I would choose vintage over new yes that's true actually because if I had the choice of getting a jumbo new or vintage let me show you I, I would definitely pick a vintage I prefer the look so yes Vintage over new. This has got all glue sepia, and I've told you that before. Whereas this is about 20 years older, and it's in really good condition. I got this one from Luxury Promise. They have one of these, by the way. Brown suede, exactly the same. That just come back in stock in Luxury Promise. This is one of my favourite bags. It's like my favourite bag in autumn and winter. Um, I think I've got like maybe 50/50 now the vintage. So yeah, I mean for me, I much prefer the way that it looks. Silver or gold, I like both. In the vintage, they look so good gold, but I like both. So I'm gonna end that video here because this is a very, very long video. But I hope that was jam-packed with a lot of information. I've got my serum here. And for not having any foundation on at the end of the day, I, my skin is getting so much better. Bear in mind, I've been traveling back to back, flights back to back, two long haul flights back to back with changeovers. Like my skin is really feeling it at the moment. And it's the hormonal time for me, and normally I get terrible skin here, and I haven't this month, which is the first for me ever, ever in history. So, can't recommend this enough. If I do have any discount codes or anything, I will put it in the description box below. I will put my outfit in the description box as well. Um, I hope that was a jam-packed luxury fashion. I won't get onto the high street fashion tips because this will be too long, but let me know. What kind of video you'd like me to see? I think I want to just do videos now based on your recommendation. Would you like me to do something like this but high street and high street shopping tips? I've got plenty. Uh, would you like to see a handbag video of like top five bags? Let me know. Maybe you want a styling haul for denim or high street or luxury dresses. A Zimmerman haul, I don't know. Top five net porte pieces. Let me know and I'm going to write down all your ideas because you have the best video ideas I've done so many video recommendations from you that I wouldn't have even thought of so do make sure you subscribe check out my last video for the extension like sneak peek reveal and in a couple of weeks will be the final probably even sooner so make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in my next video